Hi friends, how are you all doing? I'm August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and I am going to be doing the mid-year freakout book tag. This book tag has been circulating for a little bit because we are nearing the halfway mark of the year already. 2022 is almost halfway over, which is wild and terrifying and <laughs> all the things because time is freaking me out. But also because in doing this challenge, it allows us to be like reflective of all the books that we've read and answer some superlatives, which is really cool. But in going through all the books that I've read so far this year, um, I do feel a little disappointment. <laughs> I feel a little disappointment because I definitely have not been reading as much and that's okay. I'm not angry at myself or disappointed in myself for not reading as much, but just in reflecting on like the quality of books, I'm not super impressed and I just want to be verbal and vocalize that because yeah, there aren't a whole lot of like wows of books for me. We are starting this book tag off with my favorite books so far of the year, which I will totally gush about, but majority of the books that I've read this year I feel like are just like so run-of-the-mill three stars quite forgettable not very memorable and that makes me so bummed out so today is gonna be talking about kind of like the best the worst all that fun stuff um, I actually don't know who originally created this tag so I'm gonna do some digging and hopefully I can give them credit in the description down below so I apologize but we're gonna go ahead and get started I hope you all are doing really well let's get nostalgic and reflective of what the year has brought us so far in terms of literature. Okay, so I do have my handy dandy notebook here. Like I said, first off, we're starting off with the best book so far of 2022, and I have two. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about, Supper Club by Laura Williams. This book, along with the other book I'm going to be talking about, came to me at the right place at the right time. I was going through a really difficult time. I was going through grief and loss and a lot of very deep, dark, confusing feelings. And I think that's what makes a lot of books memorable too, is if our lives are kind of almost like in trajectory or paralleled with the books that we're reading, it makes them so much more impactful. Supper Club was definitely that for me. <laughs> like the main protagonist in this book, Roberta, I related to her way too much. I annotated the crap out of this book. It's about female friendship and art and food and divine femininity and cooking and bodies, romance and relationships and interpersonal relationships. Stunning. The The writing style is very accessible but it still has just such profound paragraphs or sentences in here that still linger with me. Like I will still think of one of the quotes. Um, I just annotated it a lot and this book meant so much to me especially while I was going through a time where I was lost in myself and it really helped me almost like see myself or my current situation or even to understand the way that I think. It was just perfect. This book was perfect for me. I read it in March. Supper Club definitely sticking with me. I Every time I think of this book or I just see the cover or the spine on my shelf, I get this like very melancholic bittersweet feeling inside of me and that's when I know that a book has done a really good thing. It's done a good job because it's impacted me in a way that brings up emotions. I think that's what we're looking for, especially in any form of art, any type of art, any material, any kind of content. If it makes us feel something and it lingers with us, that's that's art, my babies. That's art. <laughs> that's the first one is Supper Club. And then the second book is actually going to be Twinkle Twinkle by Kaori Ikuni. I also read this in March and at the time of reading it and finishing it, I did feel like it might have just been a four star read, but it lingered with me. This book wormed its way into my heart, like snaked its way, looped and coiled its way around my heart and then made it taut, like just like ugh, in a way that I can't quite talk about almost. It's just it, the writing style is so dainty and delicate and it is translated into English by Emmy Shimakawa. This book follows a sham quote unquote marriage between a gay man and a mentally unstable woman and their relationship with each other and how they interact with each other is just this dance and it's so beautifully written each chapter is bouncing between one of the other's perspectives but the way it's written is so dainty and delicate and soft and tender and it just melted my heart it just felt like the grace of like a little butterfly's wing on my face and on my heart I don't know how to explain it but this book really impacted me and I also annotated a lot in this one and just fond memories of reading it and feeling so connected to these characters and it's so simple. 
It's so simple. It's such a small book, but it really lingered with me. So those two, the two that I read in March, ended up being some of my absolute favorites so far of the year. And I'm so grateful that they came to me in my life when I really needed them. And I didn't even know I needed them. And I hope in the rest of the year, looking forward, that more books will do that for me. That I will pick them up at the right time and I can resonate with them and feel along with characters. That makes such a difference, my friends. So those are my two favorite books so far. Very happy about that. I think the second question in this book tag is actually asking about what series uh, or if you've read a sequel or favorite sequel or something like that. I don't read series unless it's like a manga, but I have not read any series at all this year. I haven't read any second books of anything. So just so you know, that is a part of the book tag, but like, I can't relate, so we're gonna skip that one. Then there's new release you haven't read yet but want to, and typically I'm not hyper focused on like release radar basically, but there is one book that I cannot wait to get my grubby little fingers on, and that is Cult Classic by Sloane Crosley, because I have read I think every single book that Sloane Crosley has written, and she mainly does like comedic, memoir, funny, autobiographical essays, and I just devour them. I think they're so funny and personable and comforting, but they also feel so wildly relatable as well. But this is her first novel. And to say I'm geeked out is a huge understatement. So I actually might treat myself to a brand new copy. I think I might splurge and buy myself like the brand new book because I think it came out earlier this month in June, like June something or other. So I do believe it's out already and I cannot wait to read it. It sounds fantastic. And I love Sloane Crosley as a writer. So I'm so excited to see her dip into a new genre. So that is one that I really can't wait for. <laughs> Next question is another one that like I really can't relate to, but it's most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have no idea what's coming out the rest of the year. I guess that's the pro and con of thrifting all of my books or picking up books that I've just like never really heard of. I just, that's the first time I hear about them as if I see them in a store or something. And usually they're from like the 1990s or early 2000s or whatever. So I have literally no idea what else is coming out. No clue. So that's my answer for that one. Okay, next is biggest disappointment. I think that's why my book quantity is so low as well because I've DNF'd so much <laughs> this year. I have become so picky but it's for the best reason. If I start reading a book or listening to a book, specifically I've DNF'd so many audiobooks, it is laughable. I'm just like really, really trying to narrow down what I enjoy and what I actually like. If I start reading a book and I'm just not vibing with it, I'm not forcing myself to finish it. So, so many disappointments this year, my friends. So, so many disappointments, but I honestly can't remember what books I've DNF'd or how many I've DNF'd, so that is totally fine. We don't even need to talk about them. Maybe one day I'll do like all the books I've DNF'd, <laughs> but it'd be so many or like most recent books I've DNF'd. So a book that I did finish, but that like I was just underwhelmed by was The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean McKay. The premise of this is phenomenal. Basically there is a pandemic that allows people or gives people this ability to understand animals. Uh, in a very interesting way. They can understand just by looking at an animal what it's thinking, what it's feeling through its body language. They're not just like talking or hearing these animals' thoughts. They're able to understand what they want and need and it's very primal, super animalistic and very disturbing. The premise is so good and the way that these animals communicate with humans is so eerie. It's like in verse, it's super fragmented, it is cryptic and terrifying, and I loved that. But for some odd reason, we are following through this like wild concept, really cool concept. We are following a very unlikable character, but she's not even unlikable in a way that is enjoyable. She's just there and she's a grandma named Jean, and she's supposed to be like kind of cantankerous, but we don't see throughout the entire book at all how sh other people view her in the world through her interactions and what she does. I just like don't pick up any vibe that she's anybody. There's just nothingness. Like I find no personality. There are no interesting qualities or no grumpy qualities. There was no, like she's just like this very wayward character which could work, but it just, it, it didn't. We didn't get to see her actual personality or behavior through her actions or the things she says. It was more of like, we were just told that she's kind of an unlikable character just through like her addiction issues or her past, which 
those themselves isolated addiction and past troubles does not make for a bad person or a grumpy person or a person who's looked at or looked down upon in society like that just does not make up a personality those are just things that happen and diseases and past traumas like that doesn't necessarily make up who a person is if if i'm making sense and if i'm articulating that well uh so overall this was just such a disappointment the plot the concept and the writing of the animals specifically wowed me and for that i will be keeping this copy just because i loved how the animal spoke. But the fact that we're following this one woman, we're so microscopically focusing on everything she does and not even what the world is doing at this time, how the world is reacting to this pandemic. We're just not getting enough. There was not enough in here. I think it would have been so much more interesting if we looked at a different character, blah, blah, blah. It just was not fully there. So I think this was like, for me, a run of the mill three stars had such great qualities, but like it just did not deliver. So that is my most disappointing book of the year so far in terms of book that I actually read and finished and had higher expectations for, I should say too. I did read some dud books, but I also expected them to already be like three stars. I did anticipate the animals in that country being at least like a four or five star for me. So to clarify that. Okay, next is biggest surprise. And I actually have two for this one just because I was pretty wowed by my experience with it. So the first is going to be Candide by Voltaire. I loved this book. I was laughing out loud. I thought it was ridiculous. The writing style was actually very beautiful and easy to grasp. I was kind of intimidated by it because it was written in, whoa, when was this even written? <laughs> 1759. I was so surprised at how much I love this. I annotated so much of it. I was laughing out loud. Basically, this follows this man named Candide who gets caught kissing a baron's daughter and he's told to like flee the country and he's partnered up with this philosopher who just believes in like full optimism and everything happens for the best and he goes with that very skewed philosophy and gets into like worst case scenarios like the worst case scenarios and the whole time is just like this is for the best and everything's gonna work out and I just have to stay positive it was so funny I was so surprised at how much fun I had reading Candide and it is so short and I'm just so happy that I got over the intimidation factor of like a classic a book that was written so many years ago and I just had such a blast like it really wowed me and surprised me on how much I loved it and it is so satirical it is so so deeply satirical and I just really enjoyed it so that is one of my biggest surprises and then my second biggest surprise was actually I was traveling for work and so I was looking for an audiobook and I randomly decided to listen to Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick and I obviously got myself a copy I got this gorgeous copy I love this one so much it is just stunning. I got this because I loved it so much. This was finally an audiobook that I was engaged with. I was on the edge of my seat the whole drive. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Like, this is amazing. I thought the writing style was just so fantastical and fun. And the narrator definitely added like an eerie, creepy element to it. It just felt really grounded, even though this is a book that bounces between like seven different timelines. And different time periods but all in the same location and similar characters and similar elements through each one like rabbits and then this certain plant i loved it and the twists throughout this were amazing it was like the slowest unraveling of a thread like you're just thrown right into something and you're there to see it to the end and the end did not disappoint me i was getting teary-eyed while listening to it who knows you know with audiobooks if it would have the same impact on me if i physically read the book but listening to it was such a wonderful experience it really surprised me it was the first time in a long long time that i felt that connected to an audiobook and like couldn't wait to read it couldn't wait to listen to it couldn't wait to like make time or clean my house and listen to it so like that was just it was an amazing experience and so I did go online on thrift books and got this one used this is a used copy and it is in great condition so midwinter blood and candide were definitely my biggest surprises of the year and it was very cool okay next is favorite new author 
which is a weird question because I don't read a lot of the same kind of authors. I do just find books thrifting, so like a lot of them are authors I've never heard of, or it's very rare that I like will pick up in the same year two different books by like the same author or something, unless it is like a manga series or something. But I do have to say I enjoyed my reading experience of this next book so much that while I'm out thrifting, I am actively keeping my eye out for more books by this author and I cannot wait to read more. So by that sense, I do think it might be a new favorite author, but I really need to read more to be able to classify this author as a new favorite. But that is going to be A.S. Byatt because I read the Matisse stories earlier this year. This is a collection of three short stories and I loved it. It made me so emotional. <laughs> it was so beautifully written. I annotated so much of it. The writing style, again, very accessible but there's more to it. There's like a grittiness, there's a sadness, there's a melancholic atmosphere in these stories. The characters feel so well-rounded even though we only see them for like 20 pages or something and it just really really wowed me and I've heard so many wonderful things about A.S. Byatt's other works like her full novels. I do believe she has like a set like a series or something. I think she also has maybe some historical fiction. I'm not quite sure but I'm so curious to read more. It definitely feels very like thinky brain, maybe a little bit DWM intellectual writing style and author that I can definitely see myself vibing with. So when I'm out and about thrifting and looking at used books, I'm keeping my eyeballs peeled for more. I cannot wait to read more. I, I adored this collection, the Matisse stories. I adored this collection. Only three stories in here, but every single, like all of them amazed me and I still think about them and I can still remember them very vividly and that's saying something, especially with a short story collection. So definitely, potentially could be a very new favorite author. Okay, up next is a really odd question. And I know I've talked about this when I've done other book tags before, but it's newest fictional crush. I don't resonate with that. <laughs> I don't remember a time ever in my life having a fictional crush on a book character. So what I'm going to kind of interpret that as instead is like newest fictional character that I adore. And for that one, I'm bringing it back to Twinkle Twinkle. And I'm gonna tell you Mutsuki and Shoko are two characters that I absolutely adore. Absolutely adore both of them. I think they're both wounded in very different ways, but the love that they have for each other is so tender, but it also terrifies them because they know that romantically they can never be together because Mitsuki is gay and Shoko is, is straight, but like they're married, but they know that like they'll never romantically have a relationship. It is just going to be strictly platonic, but they care for each other as if it's almost like father-daughter, sometimes it feels like mother-son, sometimes it feels like best friends, sometimes it does feel like lovers. It They have the most dynamic, tender, sweet, unconditional love relationship and I adore them. They take care of each other and they need each other in a way that while it could be viewed I think as like codependent, it is more of this like teeter-totter where they both have to like take turns taking care of the other person. And sometimes it was a little bit more of Mutsuki taking care of Shoko just because mentally she was not doing well and she was definitely struggling with some mental illness. Overall, like their relationship, so dynamic and confusing and conflicting, but just at the core of it, the sweetest, most tender love. And I adored that. So while they're both like not crushes, I just adore these characters and their relationships with each other, but also them as characters separately. Absolutely adored. So that's gonna be my answer for that one. And who knows, like maybe one day I'll have a fictional crush, but like, I don't even know what that looks like. Like, what does that feel like to have a fictional crush, like on a character in a book? I don't know what that looks like or feels like, but maybe one day, hopefully, maybe, who knows? Maybe at the end of this year, I'll have an answer for you all. Okay, next question is gonna be newest favorite character. And I had to do some thinking on this one. I really had to do some thinking. And I was like, I have literally no idea. I can't just say Mitsuki and Shoko from Twinkle Twinkle again. Like, I wanna talk about another book. And then it hit me, I know exactly what is my newest favorite character. And that might come as a surprise. It's gonna be The Schrader in Light by M. John Harrison. And I really cannot tell you what or why because the Schrader is a character. So a little bit tiniest of spoilers, I guess, but the Schrader is this like entity character 
thing, we don't know what it is really, that follows one of our characters in here named Michael around and it plagues him and he believes that if he doesn't do violent things such as like kill people, specifically women, or if he doesn't do sexual acts, the Schrader's gonna get him. So basically he believes that the Schrader wants him to do devious, horrible things. And in return, the Schrader won't kill him or get to him. So it's this looming, omnipresent, freaky, ominous character that just like follows him, basically has almost like the skull, like just a skull of like a deer where it's like missing its eyes. There's like holes. It's just the skull, very long and narrow and then like a giant cloak that's covered in like these tattered ribbons. Just the visual of all of that was just so eerie. Uh, but as the book continues, you do learn a little bit more about Michael and his past and what the Schrader is. And I just, I can't tell you why I love it because it would be a huge spoiler, which really pisses me off because I really want to tell you all. But yeah, if you've read Light and you want to talk about it, hit me up for real because the Schrader, it's just so good. It's so good. So yeah, that's my favorite character of the year. The more I think about it, the more I geek out about it. So I'll leave it at that. Sorry to be elusive and ambiguous, but like, you just gotta read light. And I really recommend this book. I really, really loved it. No, I was able to get almost like halfway through this video without Winston crying. Fun fact, I've literally tried to film this video six times over the course of three days because of him. Why? I was so close to finishing this video. In the future, friends, since this is like the mid-year freakout tag, I might be traveling to like my parents' house to film because this little guy literally does not know how to stop crying. I try to film when he's sleeping for real. And as soon as I start talking, he immediately wakes up and I can't get anything filmed. I can't get anything done. That's why this video is so late. So I've tried to film for three days, like I said, but he is literally like an infant. I don't, he just cries and cries and cries and I can't get him to stop. There's nothing he wants. Food, nope. Water, nope. Love, cuddles, snuggles, nope. Just gotta keep screaming. We'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> okay, my friends, book that made you cry. Uh, Supper Club by Laura Williams and Twinkle Twinkle by Kaori Okuni, which also happened to be my two favorite books of the year and I'm not holding them up again. So both of those, I don't think I was like actively weeping. It was just more of like realizations of characters and personalities and behaviors that I could relate to um, and either myself or people around me and it made me very, very emotional. And at the time of reading them, like I said, I was going through a very complicated, dark, scary place and dealing with grief and loss and family and stuff. And it was just really heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching to read about characters that were going through maybe similar things. They made me very emotional for sure. I don't think that it was like outright crying, you know, tears falling onto the book pages, but they definitely made me the most emotional. And then they also turn into my favorite books of the year. So that is definitely saying something. Okay, we are nearing the end. Book that made you happy. And for me, that was very, very easily. The Hard Way by Julie Luongo. This was also such a surprise. I just found this in a little free library and I picked it up and I don't think I was expecting a whole lot from this book. I thought maybe it would just be like a three star. I thought it might be like a little kitsch, maybe a little soapy, soft, hokey almost. I really did think it would be a little hokey, but it is not. I, it's a very dynamic character following a kind of like a DWM, depressed woman moving character named Lucy. And she's finding her way through the world, through all these different jobs and finding herself and getting into a very intense relationship. And she was actually engaged and then things fall apart and she starts dating all these other people. And it's just her relationships with them and then with her sister and her family and but throughout it all it's funny i would definitely say if you're a fan of the idiot by alif batuman i think this would be pretty up your alley where it's just like a very sarcastic dry main character but it is just a little bit more party girl vibes. Lucy is definitely a much more extroverted character and I really enjoyed reading from her. It was so delightful and it was funny and it was lighthearted, but it also had like very serious topics in it. And it was just very insightful. And I just had so much fun reading this book. It made me so happy. 
it was the fastest I've read a book like this large in a long time probably since almost like last year where I just like couldn't put it down I didn't want to stop reading it as soon as I finished reading it I immediately wanted to pick it back up like I don't know what it was about this specifically like it just felt like I wanted to have it like sink into my pores and just like radiate this like energy and this light. Um, and Lucy is also a painter. So it's a lot about art as well as the like romantic relationships she has with men in this. So I really loved this one. It made me so happy. I think I finished it in like two or three days, which is a speed that I'd like to get back to. But I think it's when I connect with a book and want to sit down and only read it. So this made me so wildly happy. I really loved this one. <laughs> Next question is most beautiful books bought or received this year. And I have two just because I'm having a hard time remembering. I think Twinkle Twinkle is another one of my most like beautiful covers, but I don't remember when I got it. It might have been earlier this year or it might have been late last year. So the cover is stunning and I know I've showed it off before in other videos so I'm not going to do it again but basically the book sleeve comes off and it's a beautiful hardcover book. So the other two that I think are quite stunning. This one is definitely my favorite. I wish more book covers looked like this but this copy of The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. So simple, so divine, more like this. It's a beautiful little paperback. Looks like this edition was like around 1960s, 1970s, but I just love it. I love the simple illustration. I love that it's just black and white, really simple typeface. I definitely would love more design like this. Just so simple and elegant, literally timeless. This is has to be one of my most like beautiful books that I own, I think. It, I, I don't know why I love it so much. I just, I really, really love this one. And then the second one is Avoid the Day uh, by Jay Kirk, a new nonfiction in two movements. So this is what it looks like as a normal book. And that is the art. Stunning. Love the type. This looks like very, I don't know, it reminds me of like a Swiss Alpine mountain vibe with these elk. And then down here, this is kind of like this computer glitchy kind of font look. I love it. It's just so cool. It's so odd and interesting and I love it. It's definitely one of my favorite covers ever to exist. I think we should definitely in the design world, I sh I'm saying we, I used to be in the design world, but definitely not for book covers. We should have more books that can kind of do this thing. I've only owned one other book that was horizontal when you read the title. Um, so this is just really cool. I love this. So those are my two most beautiful books that I feel like I bought or received so far this year besides Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> I've talked about that book enough. Okay, and the last question we have on this book tag, my friends, is what books do you need to read before the end of the year? I don't really like that word. I don't need to read any of the books on my shelves, but the books that I really want to get to, for one, is actually, this will be coming up in a vlog as well, so I'm just gonna briefly share it. I did receive some book mail. The author kindly sent me a copy of her new release, and that is The Existence of Amy by Lana Grace Riva. <sighs> love this cover. Again, simple, elegant, timeless, like so stunning. This is a book that follows a woman named Amy and she has a normal life. She has friends. She has a job. Definitely a life that appears normal and successful, but she's deeply struggling with obsessive compulsive disorder. And so the book kind of dives into mental illness that way. And what is it really like to live with mental illness? So thank you so much to the author for kindly sending me a copy of this. I cannot wait to read this. It feels so up my alley. Definitely love literature that follow women dealing with mental illness and going through life. I feel like this is something I could really sink my teeth into. So I'm really... Yes, Winston is excited too. We're excited to read The Existence of Amy. So very excited for this one. And hopefully I'll be reading this next one very soon because my partner and I, back in the winter time, I believe, we both got copies of The Institute by Stephen King together, this big old book. And we want to do a book club with it, just the two of us. So we are going to be reading this. We are very excited. We actually very recently brought it to the beach with us, but then we didn't read it all. <laughs> That's just kind of what happens. It's fine. But I'm hoping that we will be reading it maybe this summer or something. We're going to do like a slower paced book reading thing where maybe we do like 50 page chunks at a time and then we can talk about it. He did say he wanted to maybe potentially be a part of some videos where maybe we can be on camera talking about this book and our experience reading it together for you all. So I'm really excited for this one. Uh, I don't know much about this, honestly. I have not read a Stephen King in a few years now. Hi. I kind of feel like I swore off of Stephen King after the last book I read by him, but 
alas. I've heard that this one does not have as much derogatory anti-female, anti-women racial slurs as what's normal or like over hypersexualization of women as well. I've heard that. We'll see if that's true. I don't know what to expect. It is a big book. I have definitely been shying away from bigger books but I feel like in doing like a book club with my partner this would be so much fun. So I'm really really looking forward to this. So this along with The Existence of Amy are really the only two books that I feel like I really really want almost to the point of like need to finish this year or whatever that means but I would just really really like to and I'm very excited and they're kind of like top priority just because they do involve a kind gift sent by the author as well as a book that I want to read with my partner so it includes other people. So that is my mid-year freak out tag my friends. I'm gonna put the questions below if you want to answer them in the comments feel free. Overall you know I've had some good books this year but I can't wait to read more. I can't wait to read more books, more wonderful books the rest of this year. Hopefully read more prioritize reading more. Hopefully keep finding my niche. I'm still finding books and like what they mean for me. I think I pick up books thinking that they're going to be super up my alley and then I read them and I'm just not wowed. I'm not fully there. I'm not fully invested. So I'm still on the quest to finding more and more books that I can vibe with and that I love and I can like absolutely gush to you all about. I think that was the wonderful thing about last year is that I read so much and so many books stuck with me. They were just memorable and fantastic and I gushed to you all about them so much and I want that energy back. So hopefully the rest of 2022 will be a little bit more vibrant in that sense and more saturated with lovely 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 literature so thank you so incredibly much for being here friends i would really love to hear and know your answers to these questions if you've read any of the books i talked about i would really love to hear your thoughts on them too just thank you so much for being here and happy halfway happy halfway <laughs> my brain was trying to fill in like halfway what but just happy halfway if you made it to the end let us do some some fun comments let's just why don't you just tell me in the comments like your favorite book of the year so far even if you don't answer all of the questions let's do that if you don't want to even answer that let's do some emojis also based on like my favorite books winston's getting really sassy i'm trying to wrap this up friends i'm so sorry twinkle twinkle has this like beautiful rainbowy effect so let's maybe do like some rainbows or some multicolored hearts would be fun but supper club has gorgeous fruit looks like there's some watermelon some oranges some grapes Here's just a close up so you can see it let's just have like a lot of color let's do some fun colored vibrant fruit and some rainbows and some colored hearts and just have fun with it. That's some good energy to bring into the rest of 2022. So thank you again so much for being here, friends. And I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.